Hey there. So I was explaining to you in the previous parts, um, my ex-boyfriend and the arrogance that he wore because somebody trained him witchcraft. Well, all the other guys that came after him, all, what am I talking about all? There's only two. Uh, Crank Cat, what do you want to do? Uh, yeah, they also tried the same thing. Men that were infiltrated into my life that didn't really love God. They genuinely did love me. However, um, I thought they were in Christ, both of them. And they um, started out all right, very loving and whatnot, and then turned patient on me uh, because I was complaining about things because they were obviously, you know, manifesting demonic activity. They were not really saved. So they were obviously just kind of spazzing in a wicked sense that was breaking my heart and I would walk away. I would be like, I'm not sure about this. You know, this feels wrong. It's unequal yoking. Are you even sure you're saved? Just started to like flare up all different kinds of weird antics. And initially they would do everything. Ish, Yazi, there's a lot of wind outside. So there's a car going and going. Please just try to ignore it as much as you can until the owner like stops it. All right. Anyway, whatever. Oh, it's going to distract me, but whatever. So they would do this on a loop, like on and on, on, on. Like, what's this? I'm so distracted by this alarm. Like, doesn't the owner just know that their car is noisy? And so stop it. Anyway, yeah, no. These people were just like, I'm so distracted by this car alarm. Can you hear it? I can't multitask. I don't know anybody I respect anyone that claims to know how to do it yo this alarm anyway switch off your car's alarm for crying out loud anyway let me try and speak over this because uh, it could take forever for this person to finally come and fix the situation if at all they're even home all right uh yeah no what they do, I'm going to try and think over this because I'm struggling to find my bearings. What these men do is they come into your life, they romance you quite significantly. You fall violently in love with them. They treat you well and like for five seconds. And then when you start to pick up things and you raise them, initially they're happy to deal with them. Initially they quickly, you know, uh, correct whatever it is that you might have qualms with because remember at the end of the day they're not really playing when it comes to their feelings they actually do love you they do have feelings but those feelings are entitled they just want to you know puppet you on a string they don't they they want somebody to control they don't want somebody to love they want someone to control and not to love uh, therefore initially just to get you hooked they will do all that is necessary to make sure you don't go but the moment you are in with like your head your heart your you, yeah to a point where you start doing or like this these ornate favors for them yeah okay guys that is when then they start to basically affect their strategy this wicked nefarious strategy where I guess I'm not going to have a woman telling me what to do I'm calling the shots this is my sitako here so just deal and so you just basically need to abandon all of your rights as a woman and let this guy run you like it's 1892 very well okay using witchcraft they cause uh, you know um, an obsession in you for them such that it's hard for you to let them go and so therefore you end up just compromising everything you are just to keep them in your life then on that day you're a lap dog that this guy tells what to do where to go yeah like you're like a voodoo doll in his possession that he can just move in whatever direction that he wants it to go in which case then if this guy's evil which of course he is since he's using witchcraft he will then lead you to do some of the most heinous things against god he will turn you against the lord he will take away your soul and he will rip it out of your chest do you understand and so you will find yourself unable to do what is right in the sight of god despite your conscience that is the effect of imiti in women that's why Gary, basadi you're going to end up criminals because these men will make out of you the invisible thing that is not so wanted by the police in order to get away with murder. Exactly what happened with Tabo Pestale Nandipa. Now that you are seeing the story on national television, wreaking havoc in all of our understanding, you still don't believe many of y'all in relationships know that this is true. You started out well taking care of wood. Now you are the lap dog of some dark man. And in and of yourself, you've become a very evil woman. A very evil woman. Bad men have made you monstrous. And you can't even say, no, I don't want to do this anymore. What set me free, guys? 
from my ex-boyfriend and I felt like I was going crazy to a point where I was hearing heavy metal music in my head Jesus I cried out to God and he set me free and my ex was surprised it happened with my ex the, the next guy that I dated for just two months because I was in Christ now it wasn't easy for these dudes to lodge and stay my ex played this game for five years and so I was shattered by the time he started to pull the stunt on me however I got born again shortly after his attempt in this regard the next two guys that rocked up separated by about uh, 10 years in the middle of them the most recent one was last year or something uh, the first one was when I was still employed at MTN this dude straight like played games with me put witchcraft on a woman that already had feelings for him so it just magnified lust in me but then he disrespected me and basically expected me to act in ways that were contrary to Jesus I was a born-again child of the living God and he was heavy with lust and he caused me to compromise so much that if I stayed with that dude a week longer a month longer I probably would have fornicated that's how much we were compromised we were very in each other's faces like kissing all the time making out yeah just heavy with lust I allowed myself to spend copious amounts of time with him alone in his apartment with no accountability people around me he was obvious I was gonna end up fornicating with that guy if he did not get made to twitch by God the Lord protected me from that guy I did not even protect myself my redemption was the difference that's what I'm trying to help you guys understand within two months he had offended the living daylights out of me he started teasing me mocking me one time he told me I was only beautiful like he looked into my eyes and said baby that made me break up with him he offended me and said I was only beautiful at night I broke up with him and he just walked around after we broke up he was like oh huh, huh. I remember one time he came to collect something of his that he had given me right uh, after we broke up he was so arrogant the way he was just walking around hey eh? I'm hey how are you okay sharp thanks and I just stormed off and he just looked at me like oh yes thank you say oh he was so arrogant he looked at me like gay cancer gay cancer I was done I was done but he was so confident that I was gonna get back together with him that he just treated me like uh, she's still in her heat phase and when I never went back together with him he was shocked to a point of even threatening me over email one time telling me you don't know what I'm capable of after I told him leave me alone he was like you don't know what I'm capable of I was like oh really you're threatening me on a work email I could report you to HR he was a colleague he was so arrogant that he thought I was gonna calm down and the two of us were gonna go into the sunset I remember one time he was on the phone while I was walking past him and he told us the person on the other side of the line we were broken up and he was telling his friend that he was greeting his bride-to-be we were broken up and he was busy telling his boy I was like this dude is so naive he asked like it I was done and I knew I was done but he trusted his witchcraft so much that he went on right ahead to imagine I just need to calm down and he'll be back in a few weeks it never worked I eventually told him he was involved in witchcraft I'm aware of it and that's what made him stop stalking me the most recent dude who did this to me was the American dude with whom I was engaged for five seconds also when I was walking out I kept on telling him uh, dude no like don't let me go you just get your act together come on what's wrong with you and he basically also somewhat tantamount told me on your way out shut the door and I did shut that door and now the bugger wants me back it's all the same it literally happens the exact same way the cycle is too eerily familiar every single time and I keep saying why did my fiance and the ex-boyfriend guy mess up so fast after my ex-boyfriend took five years it took my ex five years to mess up like that but the fiance and the ex-boyfriend took the ex-boyfriend it was two months the fiance guy a month it wasn't long because the difference was my salvation it was my salvation it was me turning to Jesus that rescued me from the stunt of my ex-boyfriend and it was me being in Christ that supernaturally got me protected from my ex and my ex-fiance so what I'm trying to explain to you women right now is that the difference is Christ 
how you don't end up crazy like Dr. Dr. Nandipa is Jesus. Because I promise you, without Christ, there's no getting out of this. The witchcraft is so poignant, it is so strong, you will fall, especially considering you already have feelings for them, and they're powerful. When a man comes back to you that you weren't really done with, no sa said that you were still trying to love him, you were still so besotted and enamored. When things fell apart between the two of you, when he comes back pulling, asking a favor from you, Ha hooka guys, you're not gonna be able to stay gone. You're like I promise you, you are not gonna be able to say no. The pull is too strong. The emotional pull is too strong. And when it is mixed with witchcraft, it you it's impossible to conquer. You need Jesus. Dude will rock up on some ran into you yesterday. Memories swept through my brain. It's starting to hit me. Now you're not with me. I realize I made a mistake. Wait. This time I want it all. This time I want it all. I will be what you need. This time it's all of me. Dum, 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 dum. You will literally hear that song. You will romanticize a returned repeat offender in your life. You will romanticize it and in your head you'll be like, I found a friend today and she said you weren't tell. Suddenly the memories came back to me and I, and I, you will romanticize it with all different kinds of secular music that ain't got nothing to do with Jesus. You will see the silver lining at the end of that a gr- like gloomy cloud. He is not to be welcomed back. Jesus is the difference. All the men, two of them only, that have ever hurt me in this time that I fell romantic in love with they did not last I mean yes like it guys more than two months how about last because Jesus was the one this time around that was like not my child that stunt that you pull on all these worldly girls all over the show that keep on like bailing men out of prison breaking them out of prison because they name Anandipa or Sarah why Michael Schofield it's not for my daughters none of my children none of my girls are going to break a man out of prison bail out a man out of jail be the baby mama number five of a man that she met first but who made a mistake with five other women before he decided that he's gonna marry her I'm not gonna let my daughters be the second wife of a man that loved her first but then married some other woman first and then made a mistake, realized he made a mistake and came back to the ex. I'm not gonna let any of my kids get scraps from men that would not do what is right from the very get-go. Not my daughters. Because for my daughters, I have set apart my sons. So I to do it. down the aisle instead of walk. You know, oh, wait on the Lord. And he will, after suffering for a little while, bring you everything you need. If you ask the Lord for a clean slate, because you're in a clean slate, you will marry a clean slate. I'm 38. I'm not dead. So therefore, it makes no sense for me to settle for a guy. Or 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 all of that. I'm 38. I'm not dead. I belong to God and he does miracles. So if he could preserve me, he can preserve a man. This is a curse on the land. And if you women don't repent, understand you are going to inevitably end up with Dr. Nandipa. Why? Because it is not Nandipa doing this. The woman is under a spell and she will only snap out of it when she is an orange. Because apparently it's the new black. Y'all need to understand, Liloya Danya, you will go to prison for these men. Telling yourself, yeah, me, yeah. Uh, eh. What are you, Romeo and Juliet Relax? Blomang, you and your Shakespearean tragedies. Chill out. This is not a fairy tale. This is your life and your future. You only get one such life. And if you're going to mess it up with some strange man, understand that you're going to find yourself in orange as a qualified medical doctor. Because your name is Nandipa. And as for the men, I'm not allowed to preach to men or teach men. My message is for women and so I'm looking out for them. Go find yourself a male preacher that will teach you how to be a man. I'm looking out for women because I'm a woman. And I'm not allowed to teach men. So my message might be polarized in favor of women. And that is only because those are the only audience I'm supposed to preach to anyway. I don't know how men will get their acts together in a bunch. Perhaps they will meet a person like me. And a man who will then tell men where to get off and teach men how to avoid Jezebels. But what I'm doing is teaching women how to avoid the kind of men that are going to make them Jezebels. And this is my story. I hope you've been edified. Don't let yourselves become unan because this thing ends like a nguye. Nguye is a curse on the country. Kimona from women. Let Corobella from men. Kiritare. Kiritare. Uji sitwe nandi. And oto iso uji sitwe. Ha sisa luko jelo kwa danyana. Muna denga sa hono kumujesa anymore.
Jabo Besta has been doing witchcraft in jail, out of jail, and now with Nandi in prison, he will have no use for her. So the witchcraft is gonna fade, it's gonna fall off, and she's gonna realize she destroyed her whole future for a man that had no business being in her life in the first place. And her whole family was taken away by the witchcraft of this man too. I'm not about to go and marry a darkling that realized that witchcraft does not work on me, so he'll try a different strategy. Ain't no man that ever treated me like I'm trash when he was in love with me in a way that he could not handle ever gonna get me back. It's never happening. I am not repeating the same mistakes. Never mind twice, three times, four times. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. It's been shame on me three times already, twice. I should have seen this coming from a mile away, but I let it happen again, but not anymore. Ain't no man gonna rock up and utilize the fact that I am in love with him to cause me to sing dumb songs like I heard from a friend today and she said, shit! I'm good now. I hope you've been edified in the name of Jesus. My name is Cran K. I'm signing out. Peace! Grow your hair like me and let the Lord take care of you.